it's time for hot takes again. Our ever-growing obsession with different aesthetics has no limits. With the start of the panna cotta being stuck inside all day for over two years, we as a humanity have created 757 aesthetics, ranging from the most popular ones like dark academia and cottagecore, to less known but equally valid ones like goblin core and worm core. And by we as a humanity, I mean the pioneers of modern culture, teenage girls on TikTok. There are many videos on Dark Academia and Cottagecore explaining the good, the bad and the ugly. I have one on Grey Academia that came out quite ahead of its time in my opinion. And as expected, when you touch upon topics like race, discrimination and elitism, the people become divided quite fast. If you want to know what exactly I am talking about, there are many source materials I will link down below and a very important PSA. I love the aesthetics of Dark Academia and Cottagecore. All my life I have been wearing them without even realizing they are cool this way, because only recently the Tumble girlies and the TikTok girlies have popularized the terms. Give me a black turtleneck and I'll wear it every day, sipping on some black coffee to go, reading Emily Dickinson poems, and talking about the soul chapter in the Bo Burnham vs. Jeff Bezos video from CJ the X. However, there are no black and white things, and I think it's important to be aware of the origins of the things that we love, understand why we love them in the first place, and discuss the maybe underlying intricacies of certain trends. And so we get to the main topic of this video. Dark Academia and Cottagecore did not originate in Europe. A hot take, I know, but let's think about it for a moment. Dark Academia is one of the most popular aesthetics that there are. According to the Aesthetics Wiki, Dark Academia revolves around classic literature, the pursuit of self-discovery and a general passion for knowledge and learning. Dark Academia's visuals stem primarily from upper-class European cultures of the 19th century, Gothicism and American prep. The upper class of this time period emphasized a liberal education in which Latin, rhetoric and classics were taught subjects. These are now seen as unusual and slightly esoteric, creating an allure that presents schooling as not dreary or boring, but one that cultivates mystery, curiosity and diligence that isn't commonly seen in contemporary schooling. Pretentiousness is celebrated within dark academia community, romanticizing education and moments in life is the core appeal of the aesthetic. Making grandiose statements and wishes for success is a common text post subject. Typical dark academia movies are Harry Potter, Dead Poet Society, Killer Darlings and Mona Lisa Smile. Cottagecore is the second most popular aesthetic. Also known as farmcore or countrycore, is inspired by a romanticized interpretation of Western agricultural life. It is centered on ideas of simple living and harmony with nature. Themes associated with cottagecore include self-sufficiency, baking and caring for people. While the aesthetic is prevalent on several social media sites, such as on Instagram and more recently TikTok, the community notably prospers on Tumblr. The aesthetic is a continuation of many other nature-based aesthetics, but draws the most influence and is arguably a complete revival of the romanticization of the English countryside from the Romantic and Victorian periods. Its visuals are based on the domestic lifestyle associated with living in this type of environment, with all images providing a sense of comfort and mild adventure. Despite the number of its followers taking a progressive and subversive outlook on life, Cottagecore has been also criticized for its romanticism of Eurocentric farming life. It has also been criticized in the context of North American and Australian settings, an inadvert celebration of the aesthetics of colonialism, as well as the ways it often simplifies and underestimates the labor of farmers. I also had a video up on my channel talking about some of these points about Cottagecore, but because of me being a small human being who still did not learn how to handle all the hate comments, I have since privated it. Maybe in the future when people get real cool about a bunch of stuff real quickly, I will take it out of my private videos vault, like Taylor Swift did with her 10 minute version of All Too Well, but we will live and see. I love both of these aesthetics a lot, and the thing is they are not about clothes anymore. They have their whole intrinsic way of living attached to them. And because we live in a society when you have a lifestyle aesthetic that heavily relies on 19th century fashion and way of living, sometimes problematic concepts bleed through without people realizing it. In this video essay, I want to discuss and debate the European origins of dark academia and cottagecore, and see maybe if these cultural influences of these aesthetics is something that is at the core of the movement, or is it something that we have attributed unconsciously to them, because we live in a society in which we are preconditioned to have certain worldviews. There are many other aspects of dark academia that I will not even touch upon, and this is the romanticization of addiction, mental illness and dark themes. 
I call them that in fear of not even getting demonetized. The discourse of dark academia being problematic is very extended, believe me. So let's start at the beginning. Did dark academia and cottagecore originate in Europe? You might think so looking at the content and reading about it on the wiki page. However, the truth is that dark academia as a term originated on Tumblr somewhere in 2015. It is a term totally made up on the internet by a small community from all over the world and recently came out in the mainstream. Dark Academia is an aesthetic about academia, shocker. It's about reading, studying, learning and creating with dark muted colors, dark themes, danger and mystery. When did we also slap it with you have to live in Oxford if you want to truly be a dark academic? Why when thinking about art and culture and academics, we think about European culture as a default? Why when thinking about philosophy, we think about Nietzsche and we don't think about Muslim scholars, for example, like Averroes? Why when thinking about universities, we think about Oxford and Cambridge and we don't think about Singapore, China and Japan that also have one of the best universities in the world? Why when thinking about culture, we think about Roman and Greek sculptures and we don't think about Bakong or masks, for example? And when I usually ask myself so many questions in my videos. I don't have the answer, but this time you're lucky because I actually do. This is because of the whiteness as default. According to the Wikipedia page, whiteness is a socially constructed concept identified as the normal and centric racial identity. As whiteness is the standard to which racial minorities are compared, whiteness is understood as the default standard. This is when, for example, you read a book and you imagine the main character that has not been described before in terms of appearance. According to the whiteness as default theory, you most probably imagined a white person. The really great video about it called When Rue Became Black, but I think she privated it since then because I cannot find it anymore. In it, she talks about the character of Rue in Hunger Games that received a lot of backlash from the community when a black girl was casted in her role in the movie. Their main argument is that when reading the book, they imagined a white girl, even though there were clear descriptions of her skin. This once again reinforced the argument that when limited description is attributed to a concept, in our society we tend to default to either white features or white culture. And so it almost comes as no surprise that when Dark Academia and Cottagecore came out for the first time and were developing as an aesthetic, very limited description were available, and the defaulting was pulled in the direction of European culture as a result. Because of reinforcing these beliefs, we came about to recognize and accept Eurocentricism as a defining and intrinsic characteristic of the aesthetics, thus becoming the root of so many criticisms. And I want to challenge that. As someone who loves these aesthetics, loves fashion, loves reading and pursuing knowledge, loves being in touch with nature and appreciating it, I truly believe that we can change what an aesthetic looks like if we are aware of the origins of some of their characteristics. Does a dark academia student have to necessarily study in an old Gothic Oxford building, or can they also study in Al Azhar University in Egypt, for example? If we take as a prerequisite that only old buildings are allowed in the dark academia cinematic universe. When you constantly see only one type of representation in an aesthetic that you love, you start thinking that you cannot adhere to these aesthetics because you cannot follow some of its prerequisites. And so even less content is shared with deviations from the default dark academia aesthetic, which in turn reinforces the belief that this is the only acceptable way in which dark academia can look like. And it becomes a vicious cycle that we can only escape by critically thinking what is at the core of dark academia and what aspects of it we have accepted as a given because of whiteness as default. One Redditor says, and you might think Reddit cringe, and I would agree, but I found there really interesting discussions in the forums. Dark academia is a nostalgic aesthetic in general, and unfortunately a lot of the culture it's based on was not very welcoming of people of color, often outright racist. Luckily, it's not that source material, just based on it, and it has room to grow. An aesthetic, a fashion style, a cultural movement is what people perceive it to be, though. If people perceive more non-white people in dark academia, that's what it will become. Another one writes, in my opinion, a lot of it comes from dark academia being very Eurocentric. If you look at the architecture, the fashion, the reading materials everyone recommends, it's almost always the classics, which are usually written and created by white people. I definitely get where you're coming from. I don't feel welcome in most dark academia spaces as a person of color, and I truly think it's because of the reasons aforementioned. I think incorporating ideas from different cultures is a great way to start. I love Gothic architecture, but what about the Japanese and Mongolian architecture? 
And then on the other hand, I get hate comments on YouTube saying that I hate white culture. Incorporating elements of other culture comes with a necessary discussion about cultural appropriation versus appreciation. What I really would want to see is people from non-European countries sharing their own cultures in the dark academia aesthetic in order to change our idea of how we see a dark academia. The majority of dark academia audience are young people. They are young adults and teenagers, aged 14 to 25, in a period of their lives that they discover themselves and who they are. This is why the idea of incorporating and adhering to an aesthetic is so attractive to them. Instead of building your style from the ground up, you can borrow one that has already been created, with simple rules that need to be followed. And this is nothing new. Trends and styles have always been a part of our society since forever. Dark Academia and Cottagecore are just the latest versions of them. By being part of an aesthetic, you are also part of a community. You interact and socialize with people that have the same interests as you, that have the same style as you. More and more videos are on how to build a dark academia wardrobe, on how to have a cottagecore lifestyle, and so on and so forth. People who want to be a part of this aesthetic are searching up the guidebook, and this guidebook unfortunately right now tells them that the 19th century European Gothic style is the only one acceptable in the dark academia. And here is where we need to realize that we need to be careful when describing these aesthetics that are becoming so popular. When we limit them to only Eurocentric features, we are alienating a very big portion of people that are still discovering themselves and forming their personalities and worldviews. Dark Academia and Cottagecore are a reflection of the social norms that are already present in the society. The fact that there might be problematic aspects associated with the aesthetics is not because the aesthetics are bad by themselves, but because they are already a mirror to the issues that we face in our society. This article on the secret history of Eurocentrism in aesthetics says, even outside the realm of fictional schools slash universities, it would be difficult to find the intersection between dark academia and BIPOC history, art and literature particularly since many real-world universities do not even offer these classes. At Australian national universities alone, you cannot specialize in African studies. ANU is an internationally recognized university in a multicultural country, and yet their Bachelor of Classical Studies only focuses on ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Aesthetics should challenge traditional ideas, and yet dark academia merely continues to reflect the devaluation of studies centered on BIPOC. Dark Academia and Cottagecore do not invent anything new in terms of Eurocentrism, they just present the symptoms to a much more deep-rooted problem. By eliminating these aesthetics, we gain nothing new, we just keep the status quo in place. Reinventing and reimagining these aesthetics in more inclusionary terms is, however, a good step forward. I like the last sentence of this article. What is the solution? Research your aesthetics, reject the problematic, romanticize imaginary ancient people responsibly. I am also expecting a lot of comments on this topic, so I will answer this question right away. No, you are not racist if you wear a black turtleneck, like Greek sculptures, and read Virginia Woolf. The only thing that I hope to see is people accepting and appreciating the participation of non-European cultures in these aesthetics, in a way that remains faithful to the core values, but also give it nuance and variability in terms of what academia can look like, what culture looks like, what good art looks like, what good books look like, and so on and so forth. And in the case of Cottagecore, to rethink what living sustainably in the middle of the nature can look like. I mean, the Eurocentrism is so present in this one, it's literally in its name, but I promise it does not necessarily have to be a cottage. Even the flowers and the plants do not have to be typical European ones. A cottagecore lifestyle can look so diverse and beautiful, and we have to keep that in mind. I truly believe that Eurocentrism can be overcome in these aesthetics. And I'm not saying to eliminate white culture altogether from the aesthetics, I am saying making space and accepting other cultures as equally precious and admirable in the community. And this is done by sharing and promoting underrepresented versions of dark academia and cottagecore. I dare you to question the idea that Eurocentrism should be an essential part of these aesthetics. These aesthetics are a nostalgia over past times, but they are through the lenses of today. Dark Academia and Cottagecore did not originate in 19th century Great Britain. They originated in 2015 on Tumblr.com. And so these aesthetics can mean and look in so many diverse ways, and I truly believe that anybody can take part in these aesthetics and share their own cultures. 
in terms of works of art, books, philosophies, in terms of traditions and customs, and the beautiful nature in their regions. And even in Europe we have 44 different countries. It does not always have to be photos of Gothic cathedrals, I promise. The focus can be switched to Eastern European countries too for a change. Let's be civil and have constructive discussions in the comments. Do you believe that Dark Academia, Cottagecore and the other aesthetics should necessarily strictly promote only Western European culture? Do you believe that there is space for appreciating both Romance cultures and studying Aztec mythology, for example? And do you want me to make a series of videos explaining all the 757 aesthetics that exist on the internet? Notable contenders are Unicorn Core, Snail Core, Royal Core and Nintendo Core. Let me know which one you chose. If you enjoy me talking for 15 minutes on obscure topics, do not hesitate to interact with the buttons below and have a great day!